Hello, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's nice to be here with you again. It's been an awesome week, a busy week. My daughter's still um, homeschooling, so we are still on a stay at home order here. I don't know what's going on in your world right now with all of that, but hopefully you have some openings in your city, in your province or state. Um, I know it's kind of everywhere. So yeah, so I am excited to be here today to talk to you about a really powerful topic. And I'm just getting things set up here. So please say hello. Let me know that you're here. And I just love to be able to participate in this with you. I love when you join live and we can just have a conversation. So as I'm getting things set up here, let me just uh, move a few windows around so that I can make sure I see all of your comments. I always like to see them because then I can respond. All right. So Anne-Marie, hello. Norris, good morning. Kelly, good morning, ladies. Thanks for joining. So nice to have you here. Keep saying good morning. Let me know that you can hear me, please. I'm sure you can, but just give me a thumbs up if you can, just so I know for sure. And um, yeah, I love this topic. And initially I called it what to do when people don't care about you. <laughs> and then I thought, oh no, people are going to go, oh my goodness, what are you talking about? So I changed it to what to do when you think people don't care about you, which is great because I think so many times we have this belief system that if people don't do certain things or show up a certain way or give us what we want, we feel that they don't care, right? And it's not true. It's just what we think. The truth is people do care, but it doesn't always feel that way, does it? I mean, there are times when you feel rejected, right? You get down, you have that self-blame that creeps in. And before you know it, I, as I put in the description, you're crying into a pint of ice cream, right? And you're going, what is happening in my life, right? I mean, and then I put a little hashtag, thank goodness I'm dairy free, because I don't eat as much ice cream as I probably would if I was not dairy free. And, you know, it, I'm being serious, though. I know it's not fun when we think people don't care, especially when we care so much about them, right? And what do we do in that situation? We care so much about somebody. They don't seem to really show that they care about us. What do we do in that situation? And from someone who has been there so many times, I have been there countless times in my life where... I wanted somebody to care and they didn't. And I would try harder to make them care and they still wouldn't. So I'm here to help you because for decades, I struggled with this. I struggled to love myself. I struggled to feel loved by others. And I would look to see if they cared, gauging their feelings about me by things like, you know, what they did or how quickly they got back to me. If I texted them, were they on it or were they taking days or a week? And I would make up this story in my head that they didn't really care. More, moreover, it would be that I wasn't lovable and I wasn't enough, right? And it was maddening. I was basing so much of how I felt about myself on other people's actions. And I did a live about this kind of a topic on giving your power away to people a few weeks ago. So check that one out if you want to know more about that. But if you've struggled to really believe people care about you and you're ready to learn some powerful strategies so you can kind of stop caring so much how they feel about you, then you're in the right place. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we're gonna to learn today. Alana, hello. Hi, Anne-Marie, thanks. You're in the UK, good afternoon. I used to live in the UK, I used to live in England for three years. Um, oh, and you tagged your friend, Michelle. Awesome. Um, yeah, it can be really rough when you think people don't care, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So today you're going to learn where your belief about people not caring actually comes from, how to stop being a victim to other people's feelings, how to feel that people actually do care about you, and a powerful strategy that I use to stop worrying about whether people care or not. And this is a really great tangible strategy that you can use, and I would love for you to put this in the, into practice today. And I'm going to ask you to do something with it. So it'll be fun. So if you're excited about this topic, if this is something you've been looking forward to because you know you struggle with it, I just want you to put a heart in the comments. Put a little heart emoji in the comments if you've been looking forward to this topic because you know this is something you struggle with. Just put a little heart in the comments because I know that I have struggled with it, but I don't know if you've gone through this type of thing. So I'd love to hear more. And 
Yeah. Oh, Pamela, you're so sweet. You always call me beautiful. Thank you. Um, and we've got a Carolyn Farrell. Farrell is my maiden name, actually. So Carolyn, hello, hello. Yeah, so we've got some hearts coming in. So it looks like this is definitely a topic that is going to speak to you today, which is great. And, you know, if you've been dreaming of feeling more confident in who you are, so you stop caring so much about what people think of you, and if you want to get, I mean, I don't know if you experienced this, but I did, but if you want to get those obsessive thoughts out of your mind, like, what does that person think of me? Do they care about me? And you think about them all the time and you, like they're, you fixate on them almost. Have you done this or is it just me? Sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, and if you want to get those obsessive thoughts out of your head, if you want to stop being a victim to what people think of you, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about what to do when people don't care about you, if you're just joining, or at least when it feels that way, that you think they don't care about you. And if this is your first time meeting me, because some of you have just come into the group and you've joined the Masterclass series, the Rooted in God's Love Masterclass series, which starts on Monday, and I'm super excited. That is going to be a phenomenal event. So welcome if you're new. I'm Alana Palm, and I have Christian women who've gone through pain or trauma to set their soul free from that pain. So when I talk about your soul, I'm talking about your mind and your heart, your ego, that metaphysical level that is, you know, our makeup, our mind and our heart, right? So I help them set their soul free of the pain from the past, right? The stuff that happened that got trapped in our mind and our heart so that God's light can shine through more brightly. And I think all of us want to shine God's light more brightly in the world. So that's what I love to help women do is get rid of the stuff that's holding them back, the fear, the worry, the pain, the hurt, all of that, and just release it so that they can shine God's light in the world. And I love it. And if you want to shine more of God's light on the planet through your specific calling, I just want you to put an L in the comments. If that's something that you're passionate about is... You know you have a calling, you know you're here for a reason, and you just want to shine his light, just put an L in the comments so I can see who's on board with me there. And today, as I said, we're going to learn all about what to do when you feel that people just don't care. And it falls under pillar two of the set free method, which I teach my clients. And the, the pillar two is experience God's love so you can love yourself and love others. And this is going to help you stop being a victim to what other people think of you and just start standing on your own two feet more. My um, One of my clients, Kelly, posted this morning about how I talk about taking 100% responsibility 100% of the time. And this goes to, you know, the victim mindset we often have, not when we're actually a victim, that's very different, but when we have this mindset of, woe is me, all these things happen to me, I'm stuck in this circumstance, I can't control it, all of that, right? But we have responsibility in that, right? We have choice in that as to how we feel when we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. We can hold every thought captive to Christ. God is always refining us, right? And so we have a choice to stand in that responsibility that we have and just take 100% responsibility for how we show up, how we deal with things. And, and that comes from kind of siphoning away all the stuff that's not helpful, right? And I talk a lot about God's chisel. It's like chiseling away at the things that we don't need, that God, God does that with us, right? And it hurts, right? Being chiseled away at is not easy. It's painful, but there's a reason for it. He wants to reveal more of his character in us. And I think that's what we all want. And I'm seeing lots of L's. So yes, I can see that so many of you want to shine God's light in the world. Yeah, auto spell, it turned it into let. Yes, let him do it to me. Let him be, you know, refining me on all of that, right? So if you want to get out of that downward spiral, if you ever go in that downward spiral of feeling unloved, unliked, unwanted, not enough, all of those things, this is going to help you to have that responsibility over yourself so you don't go down into that spiral, right? Where you feel like, I've heard some of my clients talk about like spinning on a hamster wheel and not knowing how to get off, or just feeling like they're spinning out of control sometimes, where everything takes over. And I'm going to give you everything I can today, and I know we only have a short amount of time together, but in the time we have, I want to share everything I can about what you can do when you feel people don't care about you. And it's going to be really practical. Like I said, I'm going to give you a practical exercise at the end that I've done, and it was awesome. Like I feel like this exercise alone just allowed me to stand in that responsibility that I have, and I want to share it with you because it is amazing. 
And at the end, I'm also going to share, you know, if you like what you're hearing and you want to go deeper and you know you have that pain and that hurt inside that you want to just get rid of so you can shine his light, I will talk about how you could take that to the next level. And so who's ready to learn more about how you, how you can stop caring so much about what people think? If you are ready to move forward and just learn all about this responsibility that you have, I just want you to put yes in the comments. And that shows me that you are ready to just take on something new, to stand in the power God has given you by the Holy Spirit, that you have that free will that you have in that responsibility that you have as a daughter of the King. Okay, so being that our topic today is all about not caring what people think and, and what to do when you feel that they don't care, right? I want to start by asking you if you've ever struggled with this. Have you ever felt unlovable, unliked, or unwanted because someone else didn't like you? So, so the idea is you based how you felt on somebody else's opinion of you. And then you felt bad because they were acting a certain way towards you. They were treating you a certain way. So I just want you to put a you in the comments if you have ever struggled with this, feeling unlovable, unliked, and unwanted because someone else acted a certain way towards you or they did something to you. And then you made it mean that you were unlovable, unliked, and unwanted. So put a you in the comments if that's you. So this week, I asked a few questions in the group. I asked how you define an unhealthy relationship. I asked what it means to be confident in who you are. And then I also asked you what you would do if someone said you are beautiful. And I loved your answers. Thank you so much for answering. I love reading your answers. And they were so spot on in so many ways. And some of you went deeper into, you know, how you respond in those situations or what those situations have been like for you personally. And I want to thank you so much for your vulnerability and authenticity because I know it's hard to just share openly, right? But this is a very safe space. I I pray all the time that this group would just stay a safe place for women to just keep growing in their relationship with God. So thank you so much for participating. And I hope that you always find it a safe space too. And if you ever don't, I want you to reach out to me and let me know because I am all about making sure that the context is created for you so that you always feel like you can come in here and just be authentically you as you grow closer to God. Okay. So some of you have been stuck in a cycle of one of the following over the years. So let me know which ones sound like you. So possibility one, and maybe all of these apply to you because I know they did to me. So the first possibility is you made a new acquaintance and you want to become better friends with her. But every time you reach out to her, she doesn't seem to respond in the way that you want. And you wonder why. You wonder what's wrong with you. You don't understand why you're trying so hard and she's not responding very well. And so you either put up a wall to her after a while and you think, well, if she's not going to respond to me, then forget it. You get your back up a little bit. It gets, it bothers you. You feel like she doesn't like you. You start making up all the stories or you try harder to make her like you. So this is in a friendship. When you see, see a woman you want to be friends with and you're drawn to her, but she's just not giving you back what you want and you start to feel insecure about it. So is that, if that's you, put a one in the comments. And the second one, is, you know, maybe you're a woman who's been in that toxic relationship, like a lot of you answered in the question about an unhealthy relationship. Maybe you've been in one or maybe you've been in many. And you don't understand why you keep attracting this type of man or person into your life, because it could be any kind of relationship. It could be your boss. It could be a friend. It could be, you know, a parent or a partner. It could be anybody. And you often get caught up in this cycle of what they think of you because they're so hot and cold with their feelings that you never know where you stand. So you always feel like you're in this confusion and then you're drawn to them even more because you want them to like you. You want them to love you. You want to please them. So have you ever been in a relationship like this or maybe many relationships like this? If so, I want you to put a two in the comments and I can tell you for sure that this was a pattern of mine for decades and I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize it until, you know, about maybe four years ago that I was in these patterns for so long, like super codependent. So the next one is maybe you're really shy and you're too afraid to make friends. Like you just hold back a lot, you hide, and people don't respond to you in the way you like at church or at social gatherings. And it just makes you wanna close off even more. Like you, you're shy already and you're insecure already, but when people don't reach out to you and respond to you, you get more insecure and then you close off even more. 
And if this is you, I want you to put a three in the comments. And then the fourth one is maybe you get obsessively fixated on one person and their feelings about you, like I talked about earlier, and you make up stories in your head that they don't care about you. You wonder why you're trying so hard and they're not responding. Maybe you try harder to make them care about you by doing all the things you think are going to make them happy, but it still doesn't work. And this was me for so long. And again, I didn't realize the pattern, but I would get obsessed with people that I held on a pedestal and go, if this person likes me and accepts me, then I'm enough. So if that's you, I just want you to put a four in the comments. So I'm seeing lots of numbers. So it sounds like a lot of you have been in these positions in your life. So I think this is going to be really, really valuable for you. So the desire and the opportunity today is to really dig into why you believe people don't like you, how you can flip the script in your mind about people not liking you, how you can show up in life from that place of 100% responsibility so that other people's feelings about you don't bother you so much. And I'm going to show you that powerful strategy that I use to stop worrying about what people care, you know, if they care about you or not. So. What do you do when you think someone doesn't care about you? How do you feel inside and how do you act when you feel like somebody doesn't care about you? Do you show up, you know, needy or wanting more? Do you show up with walls up because you think they don't care? Like, how does that present in your life? So if you're open to sharing, I'd love to see that. But like I said to you before, for years, I was so focused on what people thought of me with those obsessive thoughts, super negative stories looking for evidence to support those stories because whatever we believe we look for evidence for so that's why it's so important to look at our thoughts to think about what we're thinking about because we will look for evidence to prove what we already believe right it's human nature so what are you believing right i used to believe everything negative about me so guess what i looked for evidence for that people didn't care even though i hope they would i always saw the evidence that they didn't no matter what no matter how much they showed me they cared i still felt that they didn't and I always felt not enough. And none of me showing up to please them made them like me more. It didn't matter what I did. Actually, they liked me less when I showed up to please them. They felt pressure. They felt like they didn't really know what I was about. They, it was confusing, right? Because I was just like, oh, what do I do to make you happy, right? And I mean, so many of us have been in this position. And it caused me, in the end, so much depression and anxiety because I was putting so much pressure on myself and I was filled with anxiety and I didn't know how to make this any better. But when I came down to it, I needed to do some really deep healing so I could set my soul free from the lies in my mind and heart, right? The enemy's lies that had been believed for so long and have that freedom to shine God's light more brightly in the world. And it is extremely difficult to shine God's light when you're always overshadowing his spirit with the pain in your soul. And maybe you've experienced this where you want to shine his light, but you know that you're holding yourself back. You know, he wants you to do something and you're not saying yes to him. You're not open to what he really wants to do. And so I'm seeing lots of comments in, yeah, Amazing. And I like that, Anne-Marie, a lot, right? Like due to the pain in your life, you were so broken, but now you're thankful for those who don't like you, but it doesn't stop you from loving them. And I think that's so important because we can still love people with agape love without expectation or anything if they don't love us, if they're toxic. We can still love them. We just might choose to have different boundaries with them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it feels... Oh, it feels pitiful to be dependent on others' reactions to determine I'm okay. It is. Like, and that's an interesting word, pitiful, right? Like, I, I didn't know. Like, I think so many of us don't have control over it. But when we see it that way, when we finally step outside of it, we're like, ugh. Yeah, that was not a great version of me, right? When we step outside and we can change something, right? So, you know, when you want to say yes to him, but you can't because you're worried about what other people think, or you don't show up as confident and courageous because you don't feel that way inside, right? When you're worried about what other people think and you're based in fear and you're not really working for an audience of one, right? And that's what we want. We want to get you to a point, and I'm sure you want to get to a point too, where you're like doing everything you do for an audience of one. And we, we hear, you know, Colossians 3.23, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as you're working for the Lord, not for human masters, right? And 
Um, there's one more. Where's the other one? Yeah. So Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money, but that also goes, you can't serve both God and his opinion of you versus other people's opinions of you. Right? So let's talk a little bit about, you know, the things that will help you to work through the situation when somebody isn't showing they care about you or so you think. So the first thing, and if you want, you can take notes. If you have note paper or you want to take notes on your phone or something, then this might be the time for you to just start jotting some things down. So the first thing, and I talked about this a little bit already, but you're thinking about what you think about. And this includes playing detective. I talk to my clients a lot about playing detective and I do it all the time. What is going on inside me right now that's making me react this way, that's making me show up this way, that's making me believe this. So for you, you can ask yourself, you know, why am I making up this story right now? This person hasn't gotten back to me in two days. Why am I choosing this story that they don't care? Where is that coming from? Where is that rooted? That's rooted in my past somewhere. So where did that first show up in my life and why do I believe that? And really playing detective with yourself and going deeper, right? Why are you believing that? Where did it come from? Where else do you see that showing up in your life? Because there are other areas where that that idea, that belief will show up. So normally the way we do one thing is the way we do everything to some degree. So when you play detective with yourself, it can get you deeper into your understanding in that situation and it transfers over into other situations. So you get to almost like take a magnifying glass over your brain and go, why am I thinking this? Take it over your heart, why am I feeling this? And even journaling about it, understanding where that root is, because then we get to uproot it and that's when it's really powerful. Instead of just cutting it off on the ground level, we actually uproot those things and take them out in Jesus' name, right? So the other thing that goes along with that is when we believe these things, we are looking for evidence for what we believe. So I mentioned this before. Whenever we are choosing a belief, <clears throat> whatever that belief is, you know, we, we all stand on these certain truths that we believe, whether they're right or wrong, we've stood on them for a long time. So if we believe we're not enough, we're looking for evidence all around that we're not enough, right? We look in the mirror and see we're not enough. In friendships, we feel we're not enough compared to them, right? We watch, you know, a, a series on Netflix and somehow in that series, we end up feeling not enough because we don't look like the people, or we don't act like the people, or we wouldn't deal with the situation that way or whatever. Or we end up comparing ourselves to other people and going, oh, well, maybe I'm better than them, right? So it's one way or the other because we want to feel better about ourselves. So we think we're not enough, but then we go, oh, but maybe I am because that person's doing that awful thing and I'm better than them. But it's all about the comparison game. And we get to take ourselves out of that comparison game. We're not comparing ourselves to other people. All we get to do is compare ourselves to ourselves. You know, can you be better today as a human being in some small way than you were yesterday? Because that's, that's who we're comparing ourselves to as God is refining us. And we're always looking for that evidence. So what evidence are you looking for? And again, this is playing detective. What's the story you're telling yourself? What's the thought? And then what evidence are you now looking for to support that belief? Okay. The, the third thing, so that's one and two. The third thing is you can put yourself in that person's shoes. So a technique I used, um, you know, years ago, and I still use today, is to think of three alternatives. So when I make up a story, right? Because I have old stories that, you know, have been planted in me and I've uprooted them. But once in a while, the enemy goes, oh, I know how to discourage Alana. So he plants this story in my head and I get to go, okay, I'm believing right now that this person didn't respond to me, let's say in, you know, four or five days. And I'm believing that I'm not enough. I'm believing they don't care. So what's an alternative or three alternatives that you could say? So for me, maybe they're busy is one. Maybe they've got a lot going on and their headspace just isn't in it. If it's a deeper message and I want a response, I often make up the story of maybe they want to take their time to respond to this carefully because it's such a deep question or it's such a kind of profound topic that they just want to take time to breathe and like let it sink in and then they'll come back to me when they're ready, right? Or you can make up any number of alternatives, right? And you can make up silly alternatives too. 
right? Like, you know, maybe they took a trip to the Bahamas and they're just off the grid, right? You can just make up silly stories. But the point is it gets you out of that headspace of I'm not enough. It gets you out of that story. So you get to challenge your stories, put yourself in the other person's shoes and be in this place of seeking to understand them. What's going on in their life? How can I honor where they're at right now? How can I pray for them? How can I support them? I've often done that actually. Like, you know, if somebody doesn't respond, I'll often say, you know, I, I, I feel like maybe you're just taking time to think about this. You know, is there any way I can support you as you're kind of contemplating how you want to respond to me? Right? How can I support that person? Sometimes they're like, can you just pray for me as I work through this situation in my life? Because I can't wait to get back to you. And I've got this really difficult situation right now that I'm dealing with. And I'm like, okay, great. I can pray for you. Right? So we can ask those questions. Instead of making up the story, we can come outside of ourselves, seek to understand and say, how can I support this person as they're going through whatever they're going through that's causing them not to respond? Instead of just making it about something being wrong with us. The fourth thing is to look at it as an opportunity for growth within you. When we're not feeling enough, when we're being triggered, triggers actually can be an amazing blessing for us because they show us there's something inside us that's not resolved. So what is going on inside you that's making you triggered by that thing, right? And we, again, we take 100% responsibility. Why am I reacting this way to that situation, to that person? Because not everyone would. You are right now, but if you had 10 people lined up, they might all respond very differently, right? And there, it's all based on our own filters. So where is an area of growth within you? Where is an area where you get to go, wow, I'm being triggered really bad right now by this situation. What do I need to do to take responsibility? How can I shift my mindset right now to a different way of thinking, a different way of feeling? Um, is this an opportunity for me to create boundaries with somebody? Am I, do I get to stand up for myself in this situation in a loving way and, and create those boundaries, right? Because that's an opportunity right there. But there's something in that where you get to grow, where God, you know, these situations will keep popping up until they're dealt with. So at some point, we get to just take a look at ourselves and go, why am I reacting this way? What's going on inside me? So that's number four. And then number five is you get to think, how much are you basing your opinion of yourself or what people think of you? How much are you basing that on other people's opinions versus God's opinion of you? So how, are you rooted and grounded in your identity in him and your worth in him? Or are you more focused on other people's feelings about you? And in, in a sense, it's idolatry, right? When we're putting other people up on that pedestal, when really God just wants us to put him up there. His opinion is the one that matters. And that's when we get to go, oh, interesting. I'm working for an audience of one, right? So what does that mean? And, and we said, you know, we talked about before Colossians 3.23 and whatever you work at, you know, work is all your, with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters or not for human beings, right? And um, actually the fifth, so I think that was five. So I'm going to go to number six in a second, but I want to pull up the activity that I did. So I can share it with you. I want to share mine with you and very vulnerably. <laughs> so we've got, so we've got one play detective. Two is looking for evidence for what you believe. Three is putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Four is looking at it as an opportunity for growth within you. Five is looking at how much you're basing it on other people's opinions versus God's opinion. And six is my strategy. So I want to share this with you because I think this is something that you could take on in a powerful way if you struggle with this. And I'd love for you to post it in the group, okay? So I can post mine in the group too, and maybe in that thread where I post mine, you could post yours in the comments and then we could see what are some other alternatives for this. So my, my best recommendation for this and what's worked so well for me is making a list of how you can feel cared for without anybody else. How you can feel cared for without anybody else. So I made a list and you can make a list of, I encourage you to make a list of 10 things. I went over 10. I thought, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to think of 10. But this would have really allowed me to take full responsibility for where I was at. So how can I feel cared about myself without anyone else? So this is my list and you might, get ideas from this, but what is it for you? What makes you feel really loved when you're on your own, when you're, you know, just by yourself doing whatever you're doing, what makes you feel 
really cared about without anyone else around. So for me, my list is clean up and declutter my work area because I love organizing. Um, organizing something that feels unorganized, like a room or a closet, like purging, right? Just purging makes me feel cared about because I feel clean, even like cleaning my car out, right? Something like that. The third one is walk in nature, taking a walk outside, putting on some worship music and just taking a walk by myself. Another is blessing someone with encouragement or a loving message, not expecting anything back, but just being able to bless someone else with encouragement. Another one is reading verses about God's love so I can feel cared about by him and not worry about what that other person thinks of me. Taking a warm bath, maybe a bubble bath, right? Something like that. Praying, eating healthy. Eating healthy makes me feel very cared about because I know I'm caring for my body and our body is a temple, right? Um, focusing on that, taking 100% respons responsibility 100% of the time really helps me because I'm like, where can I take responsibility for how I'm feeling right now? Um, reaching out to five people, you know, in my Facebook group, like in this group, right? And saying, how are, how are you doing? What's going on with you? What's new with you? And I'd love to hear, like, how can I support you, right? So again, we're looking outside of ourselves, right? And blessing other people without any expectation that they're going to respond or they're going to share anything with us. It's just the nature of giving, right? And writing five things I'm grateful for is another one because when I think about gratitude, what I'm grateful for, it changes my perspective on life. So for you, I'm gonna put a post in and I want you to put in some of your own ideas about how you can feel cared for without anyone else. So I'll put that post in after I'm done here. Okay, so I'm curious, what do you think of that exercise? What do you think of that? Do you think that's something, if you're open to doing that, if you're open to doing that, um, I want you to put in a, let's put in um, a heart for this one. If you're open to doing that exercise and posting it under mine, I want you to put a heart in the comments just as your, your sign of commitment to it so that you will actually go away and write down a list of how you can feel cared for without anyone else. Okay, without your husband, without your kids, without your friends, without anything. Just how can you feel cared for when you're all by yourself? Awesome. So Alana's open and Kelly and Ada, Geraldine, Pamela. Awesome. Lots of hearts coming in. Thanks, ladies. That's exciting. Tanya, Lisa, Ada. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Norris. <laughs> I love it. Um, and if you're listening to this live today and you know deep down that this is what you want, you're not like you love these exercises, you love what I'm sharing, but you know you want to go deeper, you know you want more accountability, you want someone to walk this path with you, like I do with my clients, and you're not exactly sure how to get there yet, but you know you want support and consistent support, then, you know, talk to me, right? Like send a message to me. I do have a wait list right now for the Set Free Academy. I will be opening spots in June for the next cohort, but for now, I'm just taking people on the waiting list. So if you want to get on the waiting list, you can actually go to the announcements tab and you can go onto the waiting list for the Set Free Academy. You just fill out an application and answer the questions. And then if it's a good fit, we'll talk, we'll have a phone call and see if it's right for you. Okay, so that's in the announcement section. And just look for the post that talks about the Set Free Academy waitlist. I can also just send me a message if you can't find it, and I'll send you a link to it as well. And, you know, I just think when, when you're struggling with what other people think, and you can put these things into play, it's going to change your experience of life, right? And so much of our life is our perception of it. So you get to change your focus onto God, your focus onto how you can feel loved without anyone else shifting those thoughts, those belief systems, and changing the frame of reference that you're looking at the situation with, seeking to understand, right? Supporting them instead of focusing on you not being enough, right? And again, you know, I just want to I want to thank you for being here with me. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope this was valuable. Um, you know, I, uh, Alicia, I would love to make this shareable, but unfortunately, because it's in a group, I can't. But what I could do is I could actually um, probably download it and upload it onto YouTube. 
And I know there's a way, actually, I gotta figure this out. There's a way of going live in the group and on like my business page, I think at the same time, which is public. So let me see what I can do um, about downloading this video and then posting it. Okay, Alicia, so let me see what I can do with that and then I will, um, I'll reach out to you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. If there's any way I can support you, please let me know. Send me a private message. Get on the wait list for the Set Free Academy, whatever works for you. We have the Masterclass Series coming up starting Monday. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Every morning you get two interviews released at 8 a.m. Eastern time. You can watch them for 24 hours for free. And then each speaker is giving away a gift. Almost all of the gifts are free. I think one speaker is giving away a gift, like a huge discount for $1.99, but like all the rest are free, right? So lots of gifts, lots of chances to win prizes. So I'm going to be going live um, almost like every other evening at 6 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be going live and these speakers have donated extra gifts for you. So come live, look for the posts, look for the information, get involved. This is going to be an amazing event and I know it's going to bless you. You are going to just be so blessed by these speakers who have poured their hearts out to just impart their experience and knowledge and wisdom onto you. So. I love you all. Thank you again for being here. If you're watching the replay, put in hashtag replay. Tag me if you want me to see your comment. And I look forward to being with you again very soon. Bye, ladies.